Hi, this is Hamida Sultana and here is the video abstract for the article entitled Alterations in Orthopod and Neural Exosomes Reduce Virus Transmission and Replication in Recipient Cells. Orthopod bond flaviviruses are transmitted by the bite of an infected vector such as exodus capillaris ticks that are obligate hematophagous parasites. These hot ticks vector or transmit several human pathogens that includes tick-borne encephalitis virus, Poisson virus, and Langer virus in the genus Flavivirus. Our recent studies have shown that orthopod bond Flavivirus full and RNA genomes and proteins such as envelope protein, non-structural protein 1, and or perhaps polyproteins are transmitted to the vertebrate host cells via orthopod exosomes. Flaviviral transmission from the infected vectors such as ticks and mosquitoes to the vertebrate host via exosomes could be an important strategy for dissemination of these vector bond pathogens. Our previous study provided a proof of principle illustrating that neuroinvasion of flaviviruses is perhaps mediated by extreme production release and dissemination of orthopod exosomes via saliva that fuses with the skin barrier cells such as keratinocytes. The quick viral replication in these skin cells would perhaps lead to virus dissemination into the peripheral system. Furthermore, higher viral loads or viremia in the periphery such as blood, spleen, or liver may breach the blood-brain barrier integrity, therefore leading to the infection of the CNS. The aim of this current study is targeting the modes of pathogen shedding or transmission via exosomes, which has been envisioned as a best approach to control vector bond diseases. This study is focused on altering exosomes' ability to affect the pathogen transmission from infected to naive recipient cells. In this study, we have used neural exosomes from SHSY5I human cells and tick cell-derived exosomes from Exodus capillaris ISC6 cells. We have independently treated the neuronal or tick exosomes with different temperatures such as negative 80, 4, 12, 23, or 37 degrees Celsius. These temperatures were selected as we store exosomes at negative 80 or 4 degrees as long or short term storage, 23 degrees is the storage of ticks, and 37 degrees is the human body temperature. 12 degrees was selected as an in between temperature. The exosomes from neural cells or tick cells were also independently treated with different salts such as sodium chloride, ammonium sulfate, sodium acetate, or magnesium sulfate. These salts were selected based on their use as supplements by several humans. Some of their use has also been shown in industry during food preparations, and other salts have been shown to inhibit virus replication. We did also treat exosomes with different pH conditions of 1.5 and 4 as acidic, 7 as neutral, 9 or 11.5 as alkaline pH to analyze exosomes' ability and their efficiency in the transmission of Tigvan Langat virus, LGTV, from infected cells to naive recipient cells. Our quantitative real-time PCR and immunoblotting analysis revealed that Treatment of neuronal or tick exosomes at warmer temperatures of 37 or 23 degrees Celsius respectively or with the salts such as magnesium or ammonium sulfates or with high alkaline pH of 9 or 11.5 would dramatically reduce the transmission of LGT via the infectious exosomes to the naive recipient cells. Taken together, all the results from this study suggest that exosome-mediated viral transmission of vector bond pathogens to the vertebrate host or the viral dissemination and replication within or between the mammalian host can be reduced by altering the ability of exosomes with basic changes in temperature, salts, or pH conditions. Overall, our study represents a way to interfere with the transmission of flaviviruses and perhaps other vector bond pathogens. We believe that this is an important study that could change the way we think about the approaches and strategies to interfere with the modes of pathogen transmission from vector to human and other vertebrate hosts.